Ladies and gentlemen, it is so exciting to be here with you all on this beautiful Thursday morning. Welcome, as always, to the weekly Spark Seat interview. I am so thrilled for today's conversations, conversation with these two brilliant leaders. We have Winona Guo and Priya Volchi in the house who have um, such a powerful message and story to share. And I'm really, really excited for this conversation. Um, as I think about courageous leadership and really what this Spark Seat series is all about, um, I was so thrilled to hear about your message and you fit right into the conversation about what does it really mean to spark conversations um, across on a global scale in our in our networks about things that really matter to us and to stop saying staying silent and taking a stand around things that are really important. Um, I'm on a mission to spark a conversation about racial equity, inclusion and courageous leadership. So when I heard about choose Princeton choose and the race index, it just blew my mind that you all in your senior year of high school created a textbook. Um, and I'm going to ask you some questions in just a second. But for those who don't know these two brilliant leaders, let me tell you a little bit more about them. So they started an organization called Choose in 2014 because they noticed that folks weren't talking about race, particularly in school. And at the very same time, they realized that part of the, all of our daily lives, from our neighborhoods to our friend groups, were actually shaped by racial division. So they began listening to people's stories and sharing them on this website that they had. A year later, they published all the stories and paired them with discussion points and other resources in one big, awesome book called The Classroom Index. They hoped to provide K-12 schools just like the ones that I've supported and worked in across the country with tools for effective conversations about race. Now they just finished traveling to all 50 states collecting stories about race, culture, intersectionality for their next book called The Race Index. I'm so excited to get involved and to hear more about this because we share such a common mis mission and purpose, which is having all of us work together to co-create a new shared American culture, um, one that values every single person, regardless of differences, regardless of zip code, regardless of home language, um, all, of, all of us um, deserve to be valued despite our differences. And we with you when um, I imagine a world where young people grow up not only proud of their backgrounds, but also taught to invest in others others' experiences as if they were their own. Um, we all imagine a community of sharing where members can listen, learn, and teach each other amidst mutual suffering and celebration. Um, this is the story that I share in the nation that I seek to live in one day. So I thank you for being here, you all. Yeah, thank Welcome. you for having me. We're so excited. So excited. Yeah, absolutely. So we share a common mi mission, right? Spark the Card Game really existed. It started only in 2016 um, as one invitation for people to break bread and connect across difference. Um, my partner is an African-American woman. I've always worked in urban schools, and I've always also noticed a gap in conversations about race, about difference, about um all of the things that make us unique, right? And so tell me, for you all, it takes courage to step out of the box and say, hey, we have an idea, we wanna do something different, or we notice that there's a gap, right? Um, tell me, each of you probably have your own definition of what courageous leadership looks like, sounds like, perhaps is, but I'd love to hear from both of you around what courageous, courageous leadership means to you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the first thing I think of is I think of the story of my parents. Of my parents. Um, mm -hmm. Our parents are parents are and they have crazy yeah. stories of uh, yeah. flying to fly to the United States once one day, um, um, rising the dish, um, you know, having you know, having marriage, um, eating um, bread, eating bread for five years, I know, you know, experience of forging and forging and courageous and their their country country I think for the two of us two of us is largely inspired as model closest to us the first thing I thought of when I thought of courageous leadership was leadership of my parents my partner um um country and how how a lot of a lot of the ways that we make that will as inspired by the art, but I guess 
Yeah, I think the the rest is just just going, going, a great, a great. Everybody told us, you told us, we should do right. And our parents have been living with us as immigrants. Um, they feel that they have to fit in, fit in, let let us assimilate to to my United States. And for us to say no, like no, we don't have to be the quiet Asian Americans and you know, so you know, stuff and stuff. And both and go out where we are, where we are, our options and our options and our different. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, I love that, and I love the connection to your um, your roots and your family. I, I always say we are we are our families. We are our stories. We are the combination of of our experiences and. You know, to go against the grain, I love that because what happens when when you two choose to step up and step out, right, is younger little girls look up and see like, oh, right, that's that's possible for me. I don't have to fit into this mold either, um, especially as female leaders. I have such strong beliefs that we as women have even more of an opportunity and a challenge, right, where there aren't necessarily seats at certain tables already there for us. So we have to actually pave a path to get to the table and then create the chair when we get to the table. Um, and so tell me about, you know, given all of what you've done, there's so many things that we could talk about. I feel like we could talk for hours, but given our short amount of time. Tell us about your either, you know, your trip across the country to all 50 states and any moments that really pushed you um, to choose courage over comfort. Because I imagine that you bumped up against some all, all sorts of experiences in every state in our country. And I'm so curious to hear um, either from both of you, if there was a particular incident or instance where you really um, were pushed, maybe your core values were, were pushed um, and you had to make a choice and you chose courage or any anything about that experience or anything else that you feel particularly called to share would be great right now. Yeah, so when we decided our senior high school that we wanted to more time and time, we a greater, greater racial literacy, literacy. Um, yeah. 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 every step, every way, the way. Um, um, at first, yeah. 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 people who are parents, parents, they all were like, oh, we're like, you have to raise the money yourself. yourself. We have to go to all 50 states. So, um, so um, publicly asking the support, support uh, uh, that is that courage, I think. And then also, also embarking on this journey, this journey of us alone, alone with no, you know, travel, you know, travel kids, um, and, um, and just figuring out yeah. where we're going. Where we're going. Oh, oh. Dreams, cars, cars, dreams, whatever we were going to do. Courage came into play. Um, 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 he was part of our team, part of our team, having strangers, strangers, and asking them how to raise money. And just, you know, going up to someone who's someone not and having a conversation about something as many as a race, and even at the end of it. But it was also, it was also, we have now, 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 it's 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 crazy to talk crazy about to talk about our, like our courage because I've never ever thought about it in that way in that way. Like, courage feels like feels like other people have more of us and I just want to make sure we make sure we credit it there because there to be of be of Puerto Puerto like you know quite a very Incredible, 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 incredible
people showing us, showing us, and felt courageous and courageous myself for like maybe like yeah. doing this project. Or into the people opening up, turning up, kind of girl, girl, right? Stories about like some of us, um, um, and like the topic as as race, um, their courage to share it, share stories with us, feeling like a lot of like responsibility. I think the dedication phase of our last one of the past events was something like dedicated to all the courageous, courageous stories for this book, for this book, for this It's like, oh, as you were talking, you were talking about courage, inspires us, inspires us, and honor, honor, other people saw courage, saw courage. Right, right, right. It, that has so many good points in there because it is, um, it's so reciprocal, um, the, the courageous leadership experience, you know, there is, um, there's no like ivory tower of courageous leadership. I think it's, it's on, shouldering up with people on the grounds and really truly listening and honoring the stories of people who have rich backgrounds and experiences and um, kind of leveling the playing field and saying like, we are all, everybody has a story to share and everybody can be a part of the tapestry that is this. And so it's just a such a powerful thing to actually commit to reaching all 50 states, right? Like that's a great aspiration <laughs> for me. I'm like, yeah, I would love to do that. And then logistically, you know, you did it. You actually made that happen from um, an idea to a plan. And I just want to commend you for that, like to be able to shine a light on other people's stories and to say, we're in this together and here's an offering. Here's a here's another way. Here's here's one tool that can support this conversation. Um, I just I, I have so much respect and appreciation for you, the way that you are going about the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. We're inspired by you too, by the way, my work. Uh, oh, no, you know, it's, it's, I, I always say, so my definition of courageous leadership, one of them, it all depends on the day, you know, because every day brings a new blessing and a challenge, but it always comes down to heart centered leadership. You know, I was a language teacher. I taught Spanish. I was a high school teacher. And um, the root word of corazón, right? Core in Latin and Spanish is heart. And so to be courageous is to lead with the heart, in my opinion, um, to truly believe that we all um, are doing the best that we can with the tools that we have. And we're all trying um, to, to, we're all somebody's child, you know, at the end of the day. And that always drives me, you know, despite all the, the, the challenges and pain and frustration that folks feel across the country, there's something that I always remind myself, which is that we're, we're all somebody's child and we're using what we have to make progress. And um, so speaking of progress, tell us about, tell us a little bit more about the classroom um, index and the race index, because we have a lot of educators in this community and I'm really excited to share, especially the work that you're up to with the educators and folks who are committed to facilitating these types of conversations. So tell us a little bit more about both of the books and then where folks can find them and anything else um, that you wanna share about that journey writing those books. Yeah, for sure. So just to give a little background, so as I said earlier, we started this in sophomore year of high school, right? Um, and how it started was we started with conversations in our classrooms, actually, in classrooms about our community and recent events that happened that had happened in the summer. Um, so for us, it was proposed to remember it as the first time that we had ever talked about our schools, you know, in temporary contexts, like this is like something that's happening right now. Right now. You know, we need to be conscious of um, And I think. The two of us found a lot of time a lot of together and talking about our own stories and then later going to downtown and so tapping random strangers on the floor asking for their stories, right? So in the beginning we were making some platform for sharing stories in and out of the classroom of the class to our daily lives were grounded in their experience in the classroom with our teachers and conversations on dinner to kind of about and we started talking to a lot of people about our project and they were saying, you know, it's you guys are really not just on these issues. Um, but in terms of um, you know, it's not really how it will be like really, um, resources or how I can start start on in my class. We were like, wow, we now we just now focus on awareness and awareness and more. So our solution for that was to collect something that is um, um, more than just raising awareness. 
good steps. Good steps. And so we design design our first book with one of the steps, which um pairs some powerful powerful, powerful powerful for day people day. Like you know, I like said, we that we have brain on brain other other who systematically smash to it around and try to be a leader of the way of the way just just um and race um and race um that book was was over schools and over schools and over sponsored by Princeton University Department of Studies Department um um and and like earlier we thought you get the more Representative version of this in that was oh, well. So we can also be safe. We got back like a month and a half, month and a half. This very, very my, my experience because I think it was, I think they have a high school thinking where we should be literate, should be literate, it's learning. But every single one of them, one of them, the interview has showed us how it is entrenched in, I guess, every single part of society, right? So, yeah. um. Um, whether that's going to going to a school that is here or or South Dakota to one of the places to be in the reservation has just been a journey. Journey to a that we'll be able to share on our next. Um, we're still working on the same thing. We have race and class race and class because it's fun. Um, and oh, cool. We spoke about it at ten. About it at ten. Um, we are currently um, we are um, we are, we are right now, right now, right now with, um, for 15 weeks on the and then we have another talk. Um, and hopefully the book will be out sometime next time. Um, we're still working out now. Our book is going to be restored to the online and all that in the process. Right on. That's so awesome. Anything else you want to add, Winona? Um, um, no, I think, no, I think you know, like the two of us really see the, the work that we do, that we do as lifelong work. Um, mm -hmm. um, so it's been, it's been, it's not, it's not up to us to be able to dedicate, dedicate 24 hours in an hour to the session over this gap year after year. You know, we did spend a lot of time on our high school, school and maybe school. some, maybe some school, which we don't recommend, but, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, like even last week last year we have our both right now both right now thinking about you know how to you know how to be sustainable how to know how to be here that our children are as effective as possible and if we can think across the United States and it's safer for our 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 worlds and our own and our um so that you know that you know from what we've been doing for the listening has been learning has been um um inspired by the by the that we meet that we did that we did so I mean so we're where this is like a like a I think I think you would be when you were playing in that um we would love to listen and learn from your stories how many advice for us is for us and moving forward in this world this world right as hopefully after this is for at least one so beautiful. Um it's it's really powerful to to honor the fact that this is um a work in progress, you know, it really is. Um, I always say the more I do this work, the less I know, <laughs> like I will never call myself an expert. People were like, oh, you're the expert in this. And I'm like, no, no, I have some expertise. I've studied this and I've gone to school. Yeah, yeah. But I will every day I'm peeling away the layers of this onion that is racial literacy, that is consciousness, that is being um, the most self-aware leader that I can be. But I have blind spots and every day I work to uncover those. And so I love the opportunity, right? Because when I was teaching, nobody was talking about racial literacy, if not racial equity. So I thought outside the box and took my kids to the community and we went down the street to the local restaurants and practiced Spanish and stuff like that. But it's, it's, um, it's the everyday stories that actually our, are our power tools. You know, they're what humanize this conversation. They're what kind of break down the divide of left and right and wherever you're red or blue or whatever the case may be. It's like, no, no, we all we all are somebody's child and we all have a story. Um, and when we hear those stories, we can't unhear them. And when we see someone's truth, we can't unsee it. And it becomes a part of us in some way, shape or form. It's, it's the nuance of what makes 
culturally relevant or culturally responsive teaching what it needs to be. Um, and so it's so powerful for now teachers to have tools like yours and teachers and students. You know, my nephew is 16 and I'm like, all right, Aiden, what are you going to do next? You know, we've got like young people right now inspire me more than I have words to say, you know, folks who are in schools rising up and stepping up and speaking out for what matters. Um, that's leadership. That's courageous leadership. And so I just can't tell you enough how much your courage, um, it is a spark and it's like creating a fire that is so strong and so powerful. And you'll never actually even know the impact of what you've done so far. Like, I just, I, I think it's, it's the, the, coolest thing to know that you're giving people tools and equipping folks with resources to then build their own path and to create their own way. And um, what a gift, what a gift you both are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So is there anything? So let's see if um, as we close out, I want to honor time and make sure that um, we get off strong and you all have a good interview. You've got some a big um, interview coming up after this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, we're going into a bunch of different meetings today about the book and book and everything. Um, what that will look like. Um, so we're super excited. Awesome. Well, let us know how we can support. Um, I extend, please, the offer around if there's any um, ideas, any uh, advice, any suggestions, any connections. We're working on a project in the Spark family that's going to be a tool. Um, it's going to be an app for raising consciousness and um, almost like a meditation app or an exercise Fitbit, for, but for consciousness and for educators to actually have a 60 second check in every morning with themselves um, to just reflect on their identity and their intentions for the day and um, how they want to show up in service of their young people. So I'm all ears. If you all um, have any connections, advice, conne suggestions, I'd love to keep the conversation going. Um, this is still just, it's still just a spark, you know, it's one way, but we're committed to making sure that we stay at the table in this conversation. And so thank you. Thank you, thank you for bringing us. Bringing us forward. Forward. Sure, Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. It's an actual honor and pleasure. And if folks want to find you on social media, website, anything else, um, can we, do you want to say those real quick and I can type them in or do you want, we can just post them on the strand below. What would you prefer? Um, we can say them right now. Okay. 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 And media, you can see. Nice. And it's all at Princeton Shoes for everything. Is it Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook? Perfect. Right on. Awesome. You two are um, brilliant. You are incredible. And your light is making the world better. So I thank you so much. Right back at you. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Have a great day. Bye.